Hello, John. How are you, Kate? I'm all right. And yourself? Doing well. Doing well. I'm getting ready to get very, very busy here. I think you've been very, very busy. That's just true. That's true. I'm not. I'm not getting ready. I've. I've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> I. I don't think any actor realizes when they take on a project that the acting part is only part of it, and that there's it's the true. part, especially here, where you get dragged all over the world and meet everybody and their brother. And so, yeah. how do you manage that and and keep enough of yourself for yourself and enough of yourself to actually do the job? Uh, it takes practice and discipline and boundaries um, and uh, lots and lots of prayer. I pray a lot. I, I try to spend as much time as I can alone in prayer with the Lord. But when you say in prayer, I'm always curious what that means mm -hmm. to individual people. So what does that look like for you as much as you care to share that is? Sure. Um, I mean, for me, it's going to mass, it's saying the rosary, it's going to a chapel, it's adoration, it's sitting in a pew in an empty church, saying a rosary or praying divine mercy chaplet or just talking to Jesus, just being like, what's up, yo? And um, yeah, and just inevitably, uh, I get recharged from that and, and uh, find just inner peace, you know, and then you go back out into the world and then every all that gets undone and then you got to go back to prayer again so where did the idea come for this because it's been around for about a year and anybody who watches it can see that it was done before jesus revolution mm -hmm. so how long have you been waiting for people to see this um I mean, I think we were, you know, I was excited for people to see it when, when I first got to meet the Pope. So, um, oh, I think we all saw a bit of it. Uh, yeah. What, what do you mean? We saw a bit of your meeting with the Pope. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think once I knew that we were actually, um, going to, to capture that encounter on film, I was excited for people to see it. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, um, it's been, um, uh, you know, a beautiful um, uh, process to to get to to make the series, and and now I'm just excited to to get to share the series with people. I'm not going to spoil the joke for people who haven't seen the thing yet, but uh, you did have a brand new suit to go see the Pope. <laughs> very, did. very I brand did. new. Extremely brand new. <laughs> Extremely brand new. Yeah, I think everybody can sympathize with having to get some new outfits to do something you really didn't expect was going to happen to you. Yeah. You know, when you're shopping in another country and, uh, you know, you got an Italian suit. Well, I was over. Yeah. I was in Italy. When oh, I was dude. Suit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And so when I, uh, they don't quite keep the same hours as, as we do here in the United States with shops. So there were a few, uh, fun little unexpected in, uh, left turns that we ended up having to take, that uh, uh, you know, ultimately, I think, drove home the point of um, what I what I go through and what I commit to on a on a daily basis, which is the theme of surrender. Well, obviously, this is a very ecumenical production. The chosen is. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, we had an announcement. Um, it's all right. And this is a very ecumenical documentary because you're meeting mm -hmm. all kinds of different people catholics like sure. matt fred the people but i was sort of interested uh talk to me about francis chan because hmm. he's an evangelical that mm -hmm. has had some revelations about the real presence in the eucharist and so on. i don't know where he is at this moment but yeah. what was the thought about talking to him and then including him because i think he's an he's an interesting kind of bridge figure at controversial to some people but kind of a bridge figure at this moment yeah, you know, everybody goes through their own journeys. And if you happen to be a pastor and you're going through a journey and you honor that journey, um, what happens? I mean, that's a really interesting question. And for me, I was I was excited to talk to him because I'd heard him talk before and I'd heard him speak about the Eucharist before and his reverence for it. And I thought, oh, this is different. And, um, you know, I... I uh, to be able to get to sit down with him and to kind of hear his heart about it, I think 
I think a lot of people, if they haven't heard his heart on the Eucharist, uh, when they watch, you know, Jonathan and Jesus, they'll be like, whoa, I, I wouldn't yeah. have imagined him having those views. Yeah. But they, they make sense, you know, especially as Catholics, it like it's, it, it's, it's scripturally sound, obviously. So mm -hmm. um, to, to see other people kind of like embracing some of these concepts and these, you know, ideologies behind the theology um specific to like the eucharist it's like it's, it's very exciting it was a very exciting conversation i love the man he's he's just he's got such a beautiful heart by the way as we're talking they're singing happy birthday to father hmm. david guffey is who his is, birthday? yeah today's his birthday oh, who is a call. consultant on the chosen and part of the bible right. roundtables and a friend of yours so he is like to say happy birthday to father guffey uh, I mean, is he there? He well, not not in the room, but he, they're just outside of my office here in the lobby. Oh, well, happy birthday, Father Guffey! Uh, I'm so grateful for you. You're recording this, right? So I'll just say I it am. To you. Yeah, I am. So, I'll show it to him later. Yes, so grateful for your friendship and your um, your spiritual leadership and your involvement with the chosen. What it just? What do you think that having all of these different viewpoints on Christianity, as evidenced in the documentary? has influenced you and influenced the chosen itself um i i can't really speak to how the viewpoints of the people in the documentary have affected the chosen um what i can say is that having them share their experiences and their their lives in in very um transparent and raw and vulnerable ways um, that's the human experience. That's mm -hmm. that's what we all want to and need and are designed to be connected to through through God. And so I think when we when we hear each other out, when we hear these stories, whether it's you know uh, Jonathan Tremaine Thomas's story about his his white father in law and him being African American yeah. and his acceptance, and I mean that was an extremely powerful. I had no idea, you know that. You know, you, you don't know what people are going to say until they start opening up. Mm -hmm. And and I just thank God for, for you know, that people felt um, comfortable enough and uh, safe enough to be able to share that. And and that's going to go out and inspire so many other people to do to do um, things a little bit differently in their lives and, and yeah. offer viewpoints that they may not have considered before. I don't know who I'm quoting, but somebody said. If you think I'm bad, you should Im you should imagine how bad I'd be if I wasn't a Christian. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, which leads me thinking about Alice Cooper, you mm. know, about Vincent Fernier, um, mm. a great golfer and uh, a great Christian. And so mm. how did that come about? Because also, you know, you're a bit of a musician, so it was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we had um, mutual connections and stuff and 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 those mutual connections put us in touch with each other and i i had heard he had a pretty wild story and and uh and just powerful testimony and they uh we got connected and uh, i was so grateful that he had the time and he he wasn't on tour at the time and and um i think he not long after that he was back on the road and he you know he's he's out there doing his thing and unapologetically um and uh and still and just not, himself and he's just himself he's got a character Alice Cooper is a character. I mean, it's now it's actually his legal name now, but yeah, Alice Cooper, the character is different from Alice Cooper, the person. And um, it's, it's nice that he has such a clear separation. There's no, there's no question about where his loyalty to Jesus lies. You just mm -hmm. talk to him and he'll talk to you all day long about it. So it was, it's, it was really beautiful to get to, to talk to him. And where have you been hiding this beautiful sister of yours? <laughs> Heavens. I'll never tell. <laughs> yeah, she's uh she's wonderful. Um yeah, she she just she just How'd you talk her into being talking saying nice things about you and everything? Uh, I paid her. I paid her <laughs> handsomely. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she just was uh it was it was wonderful to get somebody that uh that could speak to a, a whole level of of uh familiarity with me and a connection to me that nobody else could in the in the, in the series 
So um, that was something we, we well, I, I thought long and hard about if I actually wanted to do that and, you know, and, and have her be putting herself out there in that way. And uh, because I'm, I'm very, very guarded about my privacy and my, my family, and I don't, mm -hmm. I don't post about them online and, and, um, and I will continue to not post about them. And we talked about this at length. And um, I think we both felt that what she was going to add to the documentary and, and the, the, the layer that, that she was going to bring by participating um, it's just something that felt really natural and I think special to telling the story.